Hello friends, we are in the Old English period 450 to 1150 and we saw the characteristics of Old English and uh, we saw that uh, the spelling, then we saw pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar, inflections, Old English as a synthetic language, declensions of nouns, that means groupings of nouns, then we have got, uh, we have cases, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative and now we have come to one more point and that is uh, uh, the tenth, the verbs in Old English. We have seen nouns, adjectives, then uh, definite article and uh, personal pronouns, now we come to the verbs. Old English verbs, yes, it is already written there, Old English verbs. Now, Old English verbs, two tenses. Now, Old English, you have only two tenses. And you know what are this? That is a present and a past. Sometimes, some books you will find the preterite tense. Preterite. P-R-E-T-E-R-I-T. -E -E. Preterite. Preterite means Past tense with the perfective aspect. That means, simple English, past perfect. <laughs> That's all. So, preterite means past perfect tense. Understand? That's all. And some books you will find like that. That's it. And then the verb said, uh, this is first point, second is three moods. Three moods means indicative mood. First is indicative mood. The second is subjunctive mood, subjunctive mood, and third is imperative mood. Now, in modern English also we have indicative, subjunctive, and imperative. Subjunctive we don't uh, we don't stress much because it goes along with the conditionals. Now, uh, indicative mood means verb in the indicative mood means it is a simple statement, a declarative sentence. For example, he is a boy. So this verb is in the indicative mood. He sits on the branch of a tree. Indicative mood. Understand? And then we have got the subjunctive. I already told you that is to, to do with the a conditional process. For example, we have got now, if I were a bird, I would sing a song. So if, if I were, if I were a bird, so such conditions, you know. Here you can see, supposed to be was now. Send it. You cannot write like this. Now. If I if I wear a bird, you can I wear a boy. You don't say like that. You know, ordinary and in, in normal speech we don't say like that. But what it is if I wear, that means it is subjective mode. This is what is called subjective mode. Or we can say conditional as uh, the the use of verbs in conditional process. Understand? That is the thing. See? So this is a improbable condition. We have got three conditions. We have got a simple condition that is if if I study well uh, I, I will pass. Then next one if if I had studied well I would have passed. That is impossible condition. Now this is an improbable condition. That is, if I wear a bird, I would fly. So, in improbable conditions, or sentences beginning like this, I wear, the use, the tense, or the verb is said to be in the subjunctive mode. Understand that? So you have got a simple condition, then improbable and impossible. The second type of condition, you use the subjunctive mode. Verb is in the something you would be said. Now the third is imperative. Imperative means requests and uh, commands, orders. Sit down. Then say that sit is in the imperative mode. The verb is in the coming. The verb is in the imperative mode. Stand up. The verb is in the imperative mode. I hope that now that is clear to you. Now, and the third characteristics of Old English verbs were. Old English, just like modern English, three persons, three persons, that is, 
first person, second person, and third person. This is you have one. I am you are. He is the are. Or we are. Three persons. Two numbers. Fourth point is two numbers. Two numbers means singular and plural. Is that singular? For example, he he comes, they they come. In singular we say he comes. Plural they say you say they come. Understand? That's also symbol. And still there is another that is you know you have got a, a fifth point. You also you will find today a strong and weak verbs. Strong and weak verbs. Two groups. The verb groups you call conjugations. Conjugation, that's the word used, conjugation. So you can say verbs had two conjugations or two groups. A group has similarities, no? just like declension we say noun. Yes, uh, nouns have declension, means uh, the, uh, different, depending on the ending and so on, grouping with the same uh, characteristics. Here, here also you have got. So one is one is a strong conjugation, the other is a weak conjugation. A strong one I can easily illustrate by taking the example of sing. Sing, sang, sung. Now this you you say that we say that it is strong because it makes the other tenses sing, past tense sang and sung by modifying the rule vowel. You have got many uh, examples like that in modern English. I drink, drank, drunk. Right? Drink, drank, drunk. Then sometimes what happens, you know, the same vowel will be written. Bit, bit, bit. Cut, cut, cut. Put, put, put. In other ways, a strong verb does not require any outside help for tense change. That's the case with humans also. If you are strong enough, you can lift a um, lord by yourself. But if you are weak, you need somebody's help, like that. For example, walk is a weak verb, because you need either ed or a dental consonant, like t. Either you need a separate syllable, or you need a, a dental consonant, that is t, for making past tense and past participle. So in this case, strong verbs they made their other tenses by modifying the root vowels. You got the point. And that's why they are called strong. Now weak verbs, already I have given you an example, weak verbs. Look, for example. Look. You need a, a dental consonant here. Look. Look. Or love. Love. See, you need a an extra syllable, loud, loud. So this T and ED in modern English, you know why? Because one reason is if the verb ends with a, an voice, an unvoiced or voiceless consonant, past tense and past tense will be pronounced as T. For example, K is voiceless. So you say looked, looked. But V is voiced, so it's a moved moved. You got the point. Now more, I think that I have already uh, given these examples, with examples in my lectures on morphology, which I hope that you might have seen now or not. If not, kindly go through that, because there is the difference in pronunciation when the verb ends with the voiced sound and the and voiceless, sound, a voiceless sound and some other exceptions and so on. So, that you can see, please go through my lectures on morphology. So you have got five characteristics of Old English verbs. All right. Once again, what are the characteristics? First, you have got two tenses, past and present. Some people call the past tense preterite tense because they add an aspect of perfect in that verb, like present perfect, past perfect. So this is past perfect. And then you have three moods. Already I told you. Indicative, something the and then uh, imperative mood. Then you have got two numbers and three persons, just as we have these days. Two numbers are singular and plural, three persons, first person, second person, and the third person. Then there is a strong and weak. This strong and weak today they are called uh, strong is called irregular verbs. 
and the weak verbs are called regular verbs. Understand? That's what I mean like that. So there are the, the strong words, verbs were well, less in number. In Old English, there were just 300 strong verbs. All the other verbs were uh, weak verbs. Now the weak verbs, as you can see, example, this Old English example I have already given you. I'll give you some Old English example. You have got to, from man, from man, from man, means to perform, to perform something, perform your duty, that's it. Uh, so I, I will write it here, that means to perform, understand, perform. Now the past tense was formed by adding ed, ede, say, so you get a from a day, fre, me, de. This is past tense. This is present tense. See? Like modern English also, perform, perform, you say. From a day. And then, get from a day. Past possible. Fre, me, de. Past possible. PP. PP means past possible. So you can see. So here what happens is, you are not using, you are not changing the root word, but you are adding a syllabus. Order, ilde. Look at that. So these are order, some, you can see, you can list it here. Uh, order, order is one, then ed is one, look at that, ed. Understand? Or well, lufian, means love. Lufian. Lufian. Means love. See the past tense form you can see, uh, you say the look forward, look forward, look forward, look forward. That is the syllable, extra syllable is there. Ge look forward, ge look forward, I'm oh, sorry, ge look forward, o d o d e e d e, understand that? Then you have got a lip band. Lip band. Lip band means you know from there, you know, to live. That's the meaning. To live. Lip band. Live day. Past tense. Live day. See, live day. D E. Live day. And gilly fat. Gilly fat. So you use the E D. Then. D E D O D E see O D so these were the past tense and past participle suffixes used and you can see the survival of these things in modern English like the moved moved see that and build built T build built built see that and you have got uh, uh, look looked looked then uh, Break, brock, broken. Look at that. So that is regular and irregular. I think that are uh, weak uh, verbs uh, more in number. That is the old English situation. So old English situation we have seen now so far. Uh, we have seen vocabulary. We have seen vocabulary means the general character of the vocabulary. That is it was unmixed and it was pure. And the spelling you had strange characters like this. You remember no? This and uh, diagraph, this kind of diagraph, SC for SH, C for K, etc. We saw. And then we had uh, uh, pronunciation, all the long vowels were pronounced long. And we had grammar, the most, uh, the distinguishing factor of Old English grammar, Modern English grammar is Old English grammar had uh, nouns inflected for cases. Nominative means subject. Genitive means possession, dative means indirect object, and uh, accusative means direct object. So inflected, nouns inflected, adjectives inflected, then you had uh, uh, personal pronouns inflected, isn't it? Personal pronouns inflected, and uh, definite articles inflected, but today we don't have any of these things. When I when you come to modern English period, when I tell you the there is a there is a huge loss of inflection in modern English, then we compare it like this. Because in modern English, you have only the, only one form. 
Modern English has for the adjective only one form that is good. Good. There is no gooda, goody, gudo like that. <laughs> Nothing about that. Understand? But of course, we can also we can understand personal pronouns they will take. Now, one last uh, point to remember is I think you are taking this down. It's very important because very often you get a question in the university exams, uh, characteristics of old English, then you can give one or two examples and say what are the characteristics of old English and that because now I will uh, illustrate old English, then you will understand the reason. Father Ure, this is Father Father Ure, Ure means our, our father, our father. Father Ure, tu te eat. Tu, remember I told you, not tu te eat. Tu te eat. On hair phenon. On hair phenon. Hair phenon. So what is this? This is uh, the old English illustrator. This means our father. Our father in modern English. Tu te who art. Who art. You who are. On heaven, you who are in heaven. That is the meaning. Look at that. So this is illustrated. You can a small piece you can also illustrate in your answer books. So that means you know what old English was. No, 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 learning all these things because we don't use these things now. But at the same time, as I told like archaeologists, take interest in linguistics, historical linguistics or what you call diachronic linguistics, so that you so that you get satisfaction. You know, when I say, our father, who are you? Oh, it's original from us. Father, who are you? See that? Te tu, tu te eat on half an hour, etc. Now, you know, if you, <coughs> if you browse the net, you will see that there are people Spending their lifetime, the entire life, studying and researching Old English and its characteristics. There's an Old English dictionary, do you know? Compiled by, I think, two Canadian scholars. Old English dictionary, thousands of words in it. Good then. So the interest of the people will be felt. For us, Sometimes we are nothing. I am not. I am not, uh, not uh, what I should call a, a saint to to deny that. Uh, in the sense that uh, uh, that as students, sometimes we may find it difficult at this stage. But now, as I am teaching, you know, I also find it very interesting. That is going through all English and so. Soon we will be uh, coming across. The old English, the way how how old English uh, made compensated for the very their vocabulary was not rich now because it's originally it was unmixed as it is pure. So how old English managed to express nuances of meaning, hmm? different uh, aspects of life and so on with whatever uh, small stock of words they had. So resourcefulness of Old English vocabulary, that's, or resourcefulness of Old English, that's what we are going to study in our next class. Understand? We are going to see that. Well, suppose, suppose you have only, I say, two shirts, and you have to go to college seven days. What will you do? So you can do many things, you can borrow, but in this, at this stage, the language was very reluctant to borrow. So they made use of their own. So, but uh, we, what, what would we do? We will wash it every alternate day, or alternate day and then iron it and then put it on. So that is a kind of uh, resourcefulness as far as we are concerned. Understand? That's what we do. Or we take old shirts which we had left out and uh, we will try to make some changes here and there or stitch this part or that part, change the fashion and so on, start using it. Like that. 
So resourcefulness of Golden Age Archaeology is a very interesting and a challenging and a very romantic subject to learn. So you can wait for that. In the near future, we will meet again till then. Bye. Take things easy. Take care.